This is the story of Gerald, the most amazing boy around. When other kids spoke words, he only made this sound. Boing, boing, boing. Gerald, boy, boy. Gerald, boy, boy. He makes all kinds of sounds. Whistles, honks, and chirps. His doggy never barks. But watch out when he barks. Gerald, boy, boy. <laughs> Guess the sound. Sound check. This is going to be so much fun. Yeah, just like real camping, except we're in Gerald's backyard. Ah, peace and quiet. Wait, something's not right. I know what you mean. My family went camping in the woods once, and it didn't sound anything like this. Yeah, when we went, I remember hearing this stream. Yeah, just like that. And what about the sounds of crickets at night? Ah, that's more like it. Now, if only there was a breeze rustling through the forest trees. Now this is what I call camping. Oh, doesn't that sound lovely? Yeah, it reminds me of that summer we spent camping at the lake. Mind if we camp next to you? Yeah. Oh, and Gerald, can you give us an owl hoot? <laughs> Thanks. Hey, that sounds nice! Got room for one more? Sure, the more the merrier. Oh dear, mosquitoes. Oh, this is always the worst part of camping. Got him, I think. Nope, missed him. Oh, there's always something to ruin a good camp out. Ah, peace and quiet. Now that's the best part of camping. Guess the sound! Sound check! Ah, uh, you're a good watchdog with that very scary bark. I bet you keep your house safe and sound. Excuse me. <laughs> ah, that was very, um, uh, loud. Excuse me. Exactly. Yeah, you're very cute, little dog. But I like watchdogs. I like how they bark and they act tough and scary and protect the house. Excuse me. No, I'm afraid that's not very scary. Wow! That's what I call a bark! Mm -hmm. Nice watchdog! Nice! Excuse me! Here is a fantasy tale to enjoy, starring Jacob, Janine, and Gerald McCloy. They all play a part in this world of pretend. But the hero is always our sound-making friend. This is the story of a girl who loved dreaming, but she spent all her days and nights cooking and cleaning. Jenny! 
room's a disgrace. Just look at it. There's dirt, like, all over the place. <laughs> Her stepmother and stepsisters were one nasty bunch. Clean my clothes. Uh, comb my hair. Make my bed. Make my lunch. You know, maybe you could just do it yourself. <laughs> they were not very nice, but the worst part of all, they would not let her go to the king's royal ball. I'll be singing and dancing, she said to those two. Forget it! There's no invitation for you! <laughs> <laughs> Janinarella read fairy tales. That's how she knew. In fairy tales, sometimes your dreams can come true. I wish, oh, I wish for my sound-making friend. If he comes here, I know all my troubles will end. Wow, that was fast. It was Crown Prince McBoing Boing, that sound-making kid. He knew how to help, so that's just what he did. He knew this was a night they would never forget. So they'd travel in style in their own jumbo jet. Then he got her a gown and a silvery crown and a ring with a pearl. Wow, I'm one lucky girl. They drank pink lemonade at the King's Royal Ball, dancing and eating till they heard trumpets call. All eyes were on Janine Arella as she walked down the stairs, as she bowed to the king and played musical chairs. <laughs> Some folks at the party weren't happy at all. That girl isn't going to ruin this royal ball. This is a night that you want to forget. Uh, I just can't wait to see her soaking wet. <laughs> But before that stepmother could play any tricks, they all heard a sound. It's engine four, ladder six. Ah! And it just goes to show if you're grouchy and mean, you may just find out that it's your turn to clean. Guess the sound. Sound check. That's him, officer. The vicious dog I was telling you about. Did you hear him? Just listen how vicious he is. Come on, dog. Bark. Let's hear your vicious growl. Excuse me. But he really is a ferocious dog. Nearly scared me silly before. Excuse me. Look, he's even louder than that watchdog over there. What are you two doing lounging around? Have you forgotten our plans for today? We have to go in, oh dear, 20 minutes. How could I forget? Today is Aunt Nancy's wedding. Let's go put on our fancy clothes, Gerald. Oh, don't be so dramatic. It's just a suit. Is everything all right in there? <laughs> Why are you two dressed like that? For Aunt Nancy's wedding. The wedding is next Saturday. Today's the picnic, remember? A picnic? 
Hooray! Wait, aren't you two forgetting something? You're right. <laughs> What's a picnic without a blanket? Guess the sound. Sound check. A nice, simple birthday present. Right, simple, not a problem. How about a hammer? What? Too, too small. Oh, a sledgehammer! Now that's more like it. Uh, oh. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. It might be a little heavy, though. Gramps is no spring chicken. this thing. I know. I mean, let's not get carried away. We're supposed to get Grandpa's simple present. How would we get a lot more of this size home in the car anyway? Now that's a machine. And we won't have to worry about that fitting in the car. Weren't we supposed to get a nice, simple gift for Grandpa? Sure. But look, this thing practically drives itself. Can't get much simpler than that. <laughs> Guess the sound. Sound check. Exactly the style I've been looking for. <laughs> Here is a fantasy tale to enjoy, starring Jacob, Janine, and Gerald McCloy. They all play a part in this world of pretend. But the hero is always our sound-making friend. This is a story about special snow rangers, whose job was to save folks from all mountain dangers. These snow rangers were brave, and they both worked together to keep everyone safe in the freezing cold weather. There you go, Mrs. Penguin. Then one day, it happened. One ranger got lost. Oh no, now I'm lost in the ice and the frost. So Snow Ranger Janine ran and made a quick call. Boy, boy. To the most famous sound-making ranger of all. Boy, that was fast. But Ranger Jacob is missing, and now it is snowing. How will we find him when storm winds are blowing? Uh, 
That sound-making ranger just happened to know a way they could go through the ice and the snow. But with no road to follow, those snow rangers knew they had to be careful or they'd get lost too. Now what do we do? Our sound-making hero knew a sound-making trick to find that lost ranger and find him right quick. He knew dogs could pull any sled through the snow, but there was one thing that our friend didn't know. Every day, every sled dog at quarter past two takes an afternoon nap. That's what all sled dogs do. Uh, guys? Um, mush? So now they were stuck, and the cold winds blew stronger. I don't think that we can stay out here much longer. Then that sound-making ranger called up to the sky. <laughs> had a flock of Canadian geese flying by. <laughs> Look, they're forming an arrow to show us the way. We will find Ranger Jacob. We will find him today. So they ran through the snow. It was very slow going. And they suddenly noticed... Hey, look! It stopped snowing! <laughs> and there, covered in icicles, frosty with frost, was that one missing ranger they thought they had lost. <laughs> then they all noticed something they hadn't before. I think we're back home, right by your front door. Wow. All that time, things were snowy and blowy and hard. I was here all along, in our very own yard. Hot cocoa, anyone? You too. <laughs> okay, Gerald, time to go. What is it? Oh, don't worry, Gerald. Curlers don't pop like that. Come on, Gerald. Enough with those sounds. Wow! Those curlers did pop off. What a fantastic hairdo! Gerald, what happened to the hat your grandmother gave you? You had it on when you left this morning. Oh, you didn't lose it, did you? Maybe we can find it. No? Well, why not? What? A helicopter blew it off? So why didn't you just pick it up? Because it landed in the pouch of a passing kangaroo? I see. I see. So you follow the kangaroo to an amusement park. Where it got on a roller coaster. But the wind from the roller coaster blew the hat off during one of the big drops. And an eagle picked it up and flew off with it. Is that it? And then the eagle dropped it on the head of a space alien just as he was getting into a spaceship, and then the spaceship took off. Makes sense to me. Although I can't figure out how that space alien didn't know he was wearing it, but with his antenna and all. Oh, I see. Adjustable antenna. <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> Guess we'll have to get you another hat. <sighs> now, Gerald, you know there's no such thing as space aliens. I want you to tell me the truth about what really happened to your hat. I mean, you didn't expect us to believe that wild story, did you? Oh, oh, why, um, hello, <clears throat> space alien? <laughs> Sorry to bother you, I believe this is yours. Guess 
makes the sound. Sound check.